What's up? This is 2E from 2E Travels. This episode is about accessibility, whether it's uh, for you know disabled people in a wheelchair, whether it's accessibility to help you with uh, any products or anything like that, like for eating or for communicating. Throughout my life, I was born in Vietnam, came to America, I had polio, so I was living a life of, you know, in a world that's not made for me. And so I've always had to deal with accessibilities, and since I've had to deal with them, I've also tried to help other disabled people uh, in more specific, uh, you know, using crutches and wheelchairs and whatnot, um, so that they can live within our society comfortably. 1991, again, like I came back to Vietnam. You know, I was on crutches, world traveler and all this stuff. Main issue that I had was toilets. Kind of funny, but the Vietnam has those two pedals with the hole in the middle, uh, toilets and, you know, using crutches and braces, uh, not the easiest. So a lot of times I had to uh, go find like a hotel and uh, rent the room so I can use the restaurant. Over the time, you know, as Vietnam develops, you know, money flows in, five stars come in. It makes it easier for me to travel because if I need to go to restaurant uh, restroom, I can go to the five stars. You know, again, one of those things uh, that Vietnam has is over time, it's now adopted uh, MSG. And MSG does something fierce to my stomach, so, you know, got to do it. So last year, RMIT invited me to talk to uh, the students for the design accessibility competition, which was their second that they've had. Uh, it was my honor to go talk to the staff, to the judges, and of course the students that were in the competition. Uh, and I didn't wish them luck, but I told them that, you know, intelligence and being creative or not will win the day. When you're watching the video, Please go easy, don't judge too hard. It's been 30 years since I last gave a public speech. And that was for original oratory in high school and I won fourth place in the state of Hawaii on a speech called A War in Paradise about the growing gang issue in Hawaii. But uh, my, dys my dyslexia kicks in, so I stumble a little bit, but I think my funnies keep it light. By the end of the speech, I'm reading the paper, but it doesn't matter because if you listen to what is being said, I think that's important. It's about making it accessible for disabled people, for people without perceived disabilities, and making it accessible and easy for them to, like if they have a learning disability. I can't tell, but it, we can make, or they were designing, uh, things to help out. So honestly, coming to Vietnam and living in Vietnam for that long and really being able to see sort of the development of accessibility in Vietnam and now hearing that RMIT is having this design competition to make it accessible for all types of disabilities brings a tear to my eye. And uh, I was completely honored and it was awesome. We know the winners already, by the way, because it was last year, but uh, it wasn't me. Anyway, this is 2E, and hope you enjoy it, and I'm out. Peace. Welcome on the stage, Twinkle Lee, Jason Lee, Jason Lee, Jason Lee, Jason Lee, Jason My Vietnamese name is Nguyen Bo Thuy, but you can call me Thuy, it's okay. First of all, I'd like to say I'm very honored to be here, to be able to talk to you. I'm a little nervous, but I'll talk that up to dyslexia. In Vietnam, they say that everyone has a number. Mine just happens to be very lucky. When I was uh, sorry, um, 
During the Vietnam War, I contracted polio in Sedan, Nam Tha. I then was transferred to an orphanage in Saigon called Alambi. And in 1974, I was adopted to an American family in Berkeley, California. I grew up with three brothers, three sisters, five of us were adopted, and three of us were disabled. But our family loved us all equally. We, uh, we were always encouraged to participate in the family events, like when we went downhill skiing, so did I. What else did I do? <laughs> yeah, rock climbing, hacky sack. Nope. Oh, hacky sack. That's not hacky sack, but we'll get there. And then, uh, um, uh, what else did I do? Uh, I wheeled marathons, I kayaked. Basically, I did everything. I'm extremely lucky to grow up in the San Francisco Bay Area because they have a very strong disabled community. In 1980, in Berkeley, California, they had the very first curb cut at a major intersection for wheelchairs. I have traveled 34 different countries and I have, and I have done something. <laughs> I've had to overcome a lot of accessibility issues. The fact when I joined the Vietnamese, uh, uh, the Peace Walk in 1991 here in Vietnam, um, that's me. A little nervous again. Dyslexia, don't worry. Um, I'm amongst the first returning overseas Vietnamese people to come back and I had fallen in love with my mother country. In 1993, like in a fairy tale, against all odds, I was able to find my biological mother who was sitting next to me today. I was only 22 years old in college, like many of you, I'm Many of the fun people are a little older. So I, don't know. <laughs> I didn't have money back then when I found my mother, and I told her that I can't make up for the past. But I promised her that I would try to have a future with her. And 30 years later, here we are now. I have a rather unique view on accessibility here in Vietnam. When I first came in 91, if you were disabled, you were considered a financial burden on your family and often considered a second class citizen. Women were seamstresses, men fixed bikes, sold lotto, or begged on the streets, and that was pretty much it. In 19 during the mid-90s, my friend David Dang and I, he is the uh, uh, founder of AbleNet. We opened up a school in Da Nang to help the disabled people from the war get an education in computers, business, and English. We got financial donations and used computers from the tech companies in Silicon Valley, which we used in our school. We ran that school successfully for three years and then took that business model and created a print shop run by our students, our disabled students, for the next three years. Now let me tell you some stories. In 1989, when I was a senior in high school, I took $20, bought some screen door of chalk absorbers, and applied them to my forearm crutches and um, created shock absorbing crutches. I won the engineering division for the state of Hawaii that year. When I went to San Francisco State, when I was in college, I helped teach a class 
to help students build third wheel wheelchair out of $200 in material. Uh, I have traveled the length of Vietnam quite a few times. One of my biggest accessibility issues is that doors are too small for wheelchairs to go through and restrooms. Okay. Before and even now, Vietnam still uses the two foot brick hole in the hole in the ground type toilet, which I can't obviously use. So a lot of times on my travel, I have to go to many hotels, find a bathroom that I could use, rent a room so I could use it and then go, go on my merry way. Even when visiting my mom in the countryside, I, had to, I gave her money to make an accessible bathroom because I was tired of going in a bucket in the corner behind the sheep. At that time, she used the, the uh, I to put it, the potty squat shack over the river type toilet, which is kind of hard to use. Uh, when I was living in Da Nang, uh, during that time, I took a 50cc scooter and made it into a three wheel in the 90s. I drove from Da Nang to Hue and back over the Haiwan Pass. Wow. Not always the smartest, but you know. Hey. <laughs> In 2000, President Clinton came to Vietnam, and because of my work with AbleNet, I was invited to become a part of a information technology delegation, which we talked about the future of the internet here in Vietnam. I had the opportunity to go see President Clinton at Ho Chi Minh City City Hall. But to do so, a lack of accessibility, I ended up getting out of my wheelchair, climbing up and down the stairs, and pulling my wheelchair behind me so I could go see Clinton. I think it was worth it. Now, I run a custom jewelry design house where we use the latest in technology of 3D printing and CAD design. I see Vietnam changing, growing, and becoming a major player on the world stage. I also see that Vietnam still has a long way to become inclusive for people in all walks, wheels, of life. I want to commend MRIT and the industry partners for creating a competition that helps keep Vietnam on the right track. Congratulations and thank you everyone involved, for the students involved in the competition. I don't want to wish you luck. I want you to use your skill, your intellect, your imagination, your compassion when designing. Remember, inclusion, not exclusion, will help you win this competition. I can't wait to see you guys, uh, what you guys come up with. Thank you. So if you like my video, please like, share, follow, and subscribe. Ooh.